Well, hello guys, and welcome back to another E3 Thoughts On video. In this episode, what, we're looking at day three, day negative one, day, day zero, I don't really know what we're calling it, but it's the third day of conferences, and we're starting off with Ubisoft. Now, technically, there was a PC gaming conference earlier today, but who gives a shit about that? I hear they announced... <laughs> actually, the, I, the only thing I know they announced is, what, XCOM DLC? Which actually, funny enough, kind of relates back to how this whole conference started. But, yeah, Ubisoft's conference. You know, so I said in the EA conference that EA is the conference I look the least forward to because it's the one I give the least shit about. I do not care about EA at all. Ubisoft, on the other hand, isn't a conference that I, I like some Ubisoft games. I don't like others, but it's the conference that tends to let me down the most. But this year, they actually did a really good job. So far, I think they had the best conference. So far, we still have PlayStation and Nintendos to do. And, <laughs> well, we'll get back to more of that in the end. But let's go over the actual conference. So it started off exactly how I expected it to start off. They showed off Mario and Rabbit's Kingdom Battle. This was technically this was supposed to be like this big surprise, but it technically it's been leaking for a while now. But yeah, we got to see it, and I think I'm not alone in saying this looks good. Now, I don't hate the rabbits as much as most people. I actually kind of like them. I mean, I see people comp um, compare them to the minions a lot. And while I definitely see where that comparison comes from, the rabbits are a lot different in the minions. More, uh, especially because they've actually been good stuff before. The, that Rabbits game on Wii, I think it was Rabbits Go Home, was actually a really solid game. So when this leaked a while ago, I was in no way, I wasn't against it, right? Because Rabbits have been in good stuff. And based on what we saw today, it looks like they'll can, this will be good. The team that they have behind this actually is pretty solid. And they look like they're putting a lot of care into this project. The big thing I noticed right off the bat was the graphics. This is a good looking game. And now I know I've said don't trust Ubisoft when they come to graphics. They usually, they're usually fucking with us a lot. And I'll say that later on in this video. But you know, with this game being so close to release, I'm assuming this is what it's actually going to look like. And for that, this looks really good. Like the backgrounds are a lot better than I expected them to be. But the whole thing is it's going to be a tactical RPG. Kind of like XCOM or, to a lesser extent, Fire Emblem. Maybe a little bit of Decidua in there, right? It looks really good. There's a lot of mechanics. It's not sh that shallow yet. We haven't, we haven't seen a whole lot of it. I don't expect to see any of it at Nintendo's conference tomorrow. They're a little 25-minute thing. But hopefully during the Treehouse we'll get to see some of it. But we showed off, they gave us a trailer, they gave us some gameplay, it all looks good, right? Um, we found, we know Grant Kirkhope is doing the music, which that's awesome. He's a great composer, I'm, I'm totally on board for that. And they did have Miyamoto come up and was like, when we gave them this assignment, we wanted, we ha had them make a Mario game in like a new genre, right? So they couldn't do like an, a typical RPG, which is what I expected. I expected all something all of the Mario, the Super Mario Brothers games, you know, those RPGs, or maybe even Super Mario RPG, right? Legend of the Seven Stars. But nope, we're getting an, a tactical RPG. Okay, this this is how they started off the show, and it's honestly a great place to start off the show. I'm totally on board for this. And we got an August 29th release date. That's what, two months away? Just a little over that? Yeah, totally I'm on board for this. Next up, we got Assassin's Creed Origin. As I said, I'm a fan of Assassin's Creed. I like the series, at least what I've played. I haven't played Unity or Syndicate, so uh, I know those games have gone downhill a little bit. But from what we saw of Origins, it looked fine. When they showed it off during the thing, they gave us a brief little trailer, and then they talked about, oh, after the show, we're giving 30 minutes of gameplay, and I watched some of that, and it looked good for the most part. 
it's still Assassin's Creed, and it's got some new elements, the new RPG elements. It looks fine, but it's funny when they showed it off during the conference, they didn't have any direct gameplay feed, so they were they were showing it off of a Sunglare's monitor, kind of like the old videos I used to make. Knock, 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 I'm shit. Next up, they showed off The Crew 2, which I never played the original Crew. I do kind of like the concept of, oh, we've got boats, we've got ATVs, we've got planes, we've got cars, we've got everything. That's a fine idea. It probably looks fine. The trailer was interesting because they were doing a lot of, like, Inception stuff, where, like, city, like you'd have New York on the bottom and San Francisco on the top as the two were, like, folding in. It was a lot of cool shots that I know won't make it into the game. But eh, it looked it looked fine if you're into it. Um, next up, they had South Park: The Fractured Butthole. I said this last year, and I'll say it again this year. This game looks amazing. I am so excited for this game. I don't remember if last year I had played Fracture, um, the original game, but I definitely have since then, and it is great. It it's the original South Park game is so great, especially. For a fan like me, so to see it, so to see this new one, it it was great. The trailer was really funny. The whole call girl thing, oh my god! It, I'm I'm excited. It, we got the release date actually a few weeks ago, the October seventeenth, finally, because it got delayed like twice. But I'm excited, and only <laughs> just oh, I cannot wait. Next up, we got Transference. This was Elijah Wood. It's a VR game. We don't really know anything about it. They were talking about this whole concept of like downloading a mind into a computer, but other, but if I feel like we don't know anything about it, but it's Elijah Wood and he does some interesting things. Like, did you ever see that movie he produced last year, Creep? That was really, I think that that was him, right? That, cause that was really fucking weird. But it was massively entertaining. I'll give it that. But it was goddamn weird. So I'm interested to see what this will be, right? It's I, I don't really have too much about it, but it it has potential. Next up, um, Skull and Bones. Okay, so in Assassin's Creed 3, they showed off a... They had this whole boating mechanic. A lot of people really liked it, said it was the best part of the game. So, it proved as the secret proof of concept for Assassin's Creed 4, which was all about pirating. And it had a lot of great pirate aspects. It was, it's a great game. I haven't finished it yet, but from what I've played, I've really enjoyed it. So, Skull and Bones is they're taking the ship mechanics from Assassin's Creed 3 and 4 and making it into its own game. It looks, it looks very similar in a lot of ways. I know some people are going to have a problem with this, but personally, I don't. I'm totally on board for this. Making a whole spin-off pirate game is great, especially because Assassin's Creed 4 just works so well with its pirate mechanics. And you know, another interesting thing is we, we just saw a pirate game yesterday, Sea of Thieves, and that also looked that also looks good, but they look good for two completely different reasons. I feel like they'll have a lot of shared things, but for the most part, they both look great. And yeah, I, I, I'm glad we have both. I'm glad we are getting some good pirate games. Because besides for what? Uh, Tales of Monkey King Island Quest? We haven't really... I, I can't think of a good pirate game since then. And that was an adventure game. However, it did get a late 2018 release date. So it's a year and a half away, which... Most of the stuff in this showcase is either coming out early, coming out in the next like six months, or it's coming out in a year and a half, right? There was one or two in-betweens, but for the most part, nope, that's all we got. This, however, this was the last thing that was like, yes, well, until the end. From here on out, the conference kind of goes downhill. They did a whole dancing number for Just Dance 18. Who gives a shit? You know... You, this E3, besides for the Devolver Digital thing, it's been taking itself very seriously. It's been no no shit, right? Just focusing on the games, getting the information across. It's been serious for, for the most part. This, however, is exactly what I expected from Ubisoft. It's the bullshit, right? Oh, look at Dancing Game. I understand they want to announce it, 
But you know, you don't need this big dancing segment because it's really lame. And oh my god, I just realized Ubisoft didn't talk about esports. They're the maybe that's another reason why I like the show is because they're the only ones who didn't talk about esports. Thank God. But next up, immediately after that, they showed off another South Park game, Phone Destroyer. They're doing a mobile game. It's it's a freemium. Maybe it's I think it's pay to start or free to start, which you know it kind of seems hypocritical. Because remember, the whole, there was a whole South Park episode about how freemium games are created by the devil, or, well, Beelzeboot. But, um, it seems very hypocritical that they're now making a freemium game. Right? I'm not the only one who sees this. And I like the whole, but I do like, it'll probably be, for a mobile game, it'll probably be good. But I'm not holding my hopes up very high. But I do like how we've gone from what, fantasy to superheroes, and now they're doing cowboys versus Indians. Okay, right. I, I, it, it could be okay, but, uh, it's a mobile game. Next up, we had Starlink Battle for Atlas, which is another figurine game. I thought figurine games were kind of on the decline. I mean, Disney Infinity got canceled. As far as I know, Skylanders isn't doing that well. I feel like there's another one in there that I'm completely forgetting. Um, no idea. And then there's Amiibo, which, even though I own like every, all, all, every Amiibo in the Smash Bros. line, Amiibos are really shit. And as far as I'm concerned, even though Amiibos are cool, even though Amiibos were cool, I think they kind of killed the Toys to Life genre, if you know what I mean. So, yeah, this... I don't, I could care less about it. I'm already, I'm sick of the Toys for Life. After I buy the next few Smash Bros. Amiibo, just so that I can have a complete collection, I'm done forever, right? I've had my run. They were, it was okay. It was, it was always kind of bullshit, but I, I don't know. I kind of, I enjoyed it for a while. I didn't even pick up the last two Skylanders games. And I'm pretty sure they're not announcing another one this year. So, yeah, um... And it, it is cool, though, that it's coming to the Switch. And, oh my god, please tell me I'm... Why is it that both times, today and yesterday, I've been reminded of No Man's Skies? That's not a good thing. <laughs> um, next up, they talked about Steep. Yeah, remember this game? They announced it at the end of the conference last year and then just never talked about it again. It released in December, but yet they didn't... I don't think I saw a single ad for it. And it just kind of came out. And now they're doing DLC a full year later. It's an Olympics DLC, which makes me think maybe Sega lost the contract to make the official Olympics game. Knock, knock, knock. Yeah, I don't think we'll be getting a new Mario and whatever at the Olympics, whatever. Right? So, whatever. It's it's steep, steep. I, don't, I honestly don't even know. I know nothing. Besides for it's a winter... Uh, open world, whatever. I don't really care. Right. I Again, this is the part of the conference that falls downhill. Um, next, we got Far Cry 4. Or Far Cry 5, I mean. I, I liked Far Cry 3. I had a lot of fun with Far Cry 3. And I played a little bit of Far Cry 4, but it just... It didn't... It wasn't doing it for me. This does look a lot like Far Cry 4 and 3 and 4, which, again, Far Cry 3 was a good game. I'm not holding my breath. It could be good. Don't get me wrong. It could be good, but it just, it kind of looks like whatever. And at least, it, I do like the whole scenery change. That's, that's at least, it's a nice change of pace, <laughs> at least, because, because, <laughs> yeah. And then, we got a gameplay trailer for this. But, um, it's one of those very scripted gameplay trailers, so I don't know what to think of it either way, really. I don't know. I want it to be good, but if it's not, I'm not going to be surprised. And then they ended it off with something I did not expect, Beyond Good and Evil 2. I know for some people, this is a major announcement, because I thought it was confirmed that Beyond Good and Evil 2 wasn't going to be at E3 this year. Because I know we thought it was going to be here last year, and then it wasn't, so I didn't think it was going to be here this year. 
We didn't get any gameplay, anything like that. We just got a we got a CGI trailer. It looks good. It looks interesting based on the CGI trailer. But that's it. It's a CGI trailer. I, you know, if you're excited for this, good for you. I know there's a lot of hype behind this. I know there's a lot of passion being put into this, hopefully. You know, more power to you. I... I never played the original Beyond Good and Evil 2. Maybe if we finally get our GameCube virtual console, maybe I'll finally play it. But, uh, <laughs> I, I don't know. And, you know, this did look interesting. I liked, we see them flying around in, like, this futuristic space city. But it's not, like, every generic space city ever, you know, like the one out of, um, um, Star Wars Attack of the Clones or... Blade Runner, there's another one, The Fifth Element. It did kind of remind me of The Fifth Element, but it looks a little different. It at least it's it at least is doing something different. And the trailer looks interesting. But uh we'll just have to wait and see. We probably won't hear an, we didn't even get a release year, which of course I expected. We'll probably hear a little bit more about it next year and then it'll probably maybe come out in 2019 at the earliest. We'll see. But hey, it was a cool way to end the show. I'll give them that. But yeah, Ubisoft had a pretty great conference. Honestly, it's it's been the best one so far. It had the most interesting games. Sure, the first half was really good. The second half was not bad, but not good either. Somewhere in the middle, kind of mediocre-ish. But it ended really strong. So, uh, you know, I keep giving these... What did I, I don't remember what I ranked Bethesda last night, but based on that Wolfenstein trailer, I was really high on it. Now, with it, now though, that it's, I've had some time to sneak in, low, whatever grade I gave it, lower that down a few points, because Ubisoft has had the best show so far. I have We have Sony's in a few hours, so we'll see. But I guess I'd give it, I don't know, maybe, may, maybe a B+. Plus? It's not perfect, but what was here, I really enjoyed. It had a lot of stuff that surprised me and a lot of interesting things. But with all this being said, I hope you all enjoyed. Stay tuned for Sony's show later tonight. Until next time, peace.